started. Thank you. Okay, um, so I'd like to introduce tonight's uh, speaker for this evening, Greg Edwards. Um, we've had Greg here before to talk about uh, creative photography, to talk about taking photographs of the moon and the Milky Way. Um, and I'll let Greg talk about his background. He's really an excellent photographer. So I'll turn it over to Greg. Thank you. Could you start the slides? Okay. Please excuse my voice. Um, I got cancer a few months ago and it's messed up my voice among other things. This is today's meeting. Let's back up a bit. Hmm. Everyone see that? Mm -hmm. You're on slide two, I think. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna go. Yeah. This is the way, one of the ways, this is gonna cover some ways that you can prove your photography. Um, I've given it this talk before, but not too often. If you have suggestions, <laughs> improvements, and so on, uh, put them in notes or send them to me. Next, please. I think you all know the famous pianist Ansel Adams, who also dabbled in photography. <laughs> Next, the important thing is, is that he claimed that taking the picture, the negative, is just half the job. The other half is the post-processing, the dark room, or in our case, a uh, light room or Photoshop. Um, I'm an active photographer. I've done a lot of different things. Next slide. Um, I've done a whole bunch of different things. I've led a lot of field trips to various places, three times for pay, the rest of the time for free. I've been to a lot of workshops. I recommend you take workshops from professional photographers whose work you admire. Um, we'll talk more about 365 in a bit. Um, I encourage you to write and in terms of writing, um, I do a weekly photography newsletter. I also do a five minute plus minus a short essay for the Facebook group, Photographic Arts 365. Um, I've built a number of photography books. They're more than just uh, taking pictures or writing it. They're hard to come when one lined up. And um, post books are something in Facebook where they don't make pictures prints of your pictures for a given year. You could edit out the bad stuff. Next. First thing I strongly, strongly recommend you do is buy the book Art and Fear by David Bayless and Ted Orlin. It's a standard book for almost all art classes if you're going for um, MFA or BFA. The other thing I strongly recommend you do is understand and do a 365 project and also consider what may be best for you. I'll go into this more later. However, you set the rules. You judge what to put in the 365. The important thing is just do it. Next. There are two key concepts to art and fear. The one was um, that they looked at was a ceramics class where the teacher divided the class into two. Half the class were told that their entire final grade would be on making one perfect vase. They could try as many times as they wanted, but they were to turn in their very best vase and that would constitute their entire final grade. The other half of the class was told, your entire fin final grade will depend on how many vases you turn in. I don't care how bad they are. You just have to turn in the most faces to get the highest grade. At the end of the quarter, the people who did the fast work turned, made a lot of vases, had higher quality vases than the students who worked throughout the entire quarter trying to make one perfect face. 
I think this applies to photography also. There's a time to be careful and a time for speed. Photography is basically built in, uh, comes from two or three different elements. Um, it is something to experiment with, try a lot of experiments, see what works, see what does work. I'll talk more about that in a bit. The other key concept is get over your fear of showing your work. Display your work in public. Post to Facebook or wherever else you want. I'll show it to your family and friends. They'll say yes because you're there, your family and friends. You don't always get the best feedback from them, but you get practice. Show it to peers, like in the camera club. If you take a workshop, many workshops have um, a place where you introduce yourself by showing. Hola. Yourself. Is there a question there? But one of the better places to show your work is when you're waiting in line to buy something at Safeway or something. Ask the teller or the whoever, can I show you a recent picture? And once they understand you, they'll almost always say yes. And then you show them the picture and just as soon as you've shown it to them, they say, that's very, and then their voices freeze if you have a good picture. And they say, what the hell? Did you make that? Whose picture is it really? Kind of fun. But the thing is, these people don't know you at all. They have no particular reason to be polite. So you can get really good feedback as to what the average person thinks about your photography. Next. This is from a class I took through Santa Fe Photographic Workshops. Uh, I was trying to do a portrait without actually showing eyes. And this is real ca uh, cowboy. Next. There are a lot of different ways that you can improve your photography, but you also need to consider that different people have different goals and different meanings of what they want to get out of photography. Probably no one has the same combination of needs, but there's some common methods that artists and photographers can use to improve it. This talk is meant to be collaborative. I'll go over ways and we can discuss advantages and disadvantages. What your goals are, what your desires are, are up to you. I'm trying to show you some powerful tools. You decide what you actually want to do with them. Next. One of the best goals, in my opinion, is to do a 365 pro project. The basic goal in a 365 is to photograph, post-process, and then publish. Caveats. Some 365 projects say you have to do all on the same day. I don't believe that. I think that's harmful. Um, in my opinion, you could take the photograph one week, post-process it a week later, and post it a month later. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you post a picture a day. It needs to be posted because you want to get over your fear of showing your work to other people, to strangers. Where you can post it doesn't matter. It just needs to be a public place. Facebook, Flickr, Instagram, wherever you want is fine. Set up your own rules for 365 project. Just be sure that you do a picture a day. You can enhance a 365. If you do a seven by 52 project, you do a different photo show every week of seven pictures. That means you need to do all three steps ahead of time. So you can select your seven pictures. You assume that you're going to put this in a gallery. So you need to sequence them and get them in a good order. I generally do a minimum of 10 pictures and then wait overnight and down select for just the seven best. Generally, it's the seven, six or seven that are the best of this that I'll use. But sometimes I need a bridge picture that's not quite as good. I'll select one of the ones that was not actually initially selected. If you want to be busy, uh, you can do a couple of different 365 projects at the same time. Maybe one on national park photos and maybe another on your local neighborhood. 
I don't know about you, but my neighborhood has wonderful flowers. Next. You should, as a photographer, get practice writing. You're going to have to write to describe things. You're going to need to write to have clarity. Even selecting a good title for a photograph requires that you be careful in what you say. I'm sure you've all seen uh, some really poorly worded title photographs in um, competition. Uh, years ago when I started, I don't know what the current rule is, but the, the um, software that we use, um, Software Pursuits, allowed for a title up to 4,000 characters. I got laughed out of the room when I was displaying that picture. They gave up reading it after about 200 characters. So I didn't realize that. The software allowed it. But the other thing was, I wasn't being very clear in what I was saying. And I should have, with practice, shorten, clarify, cut, be concise, be precise, improve what you're writing, improve your goals. Greg, uh, are you taking questions now or do you want to wait until after? For you, absolutely not. Anyone else, yes. OK. Ahead, <laughs> well, just. <laughs> uh, you know my background. I'm a, a, for those of you who don't know, I'm a broadcast journalist, and we always went by the five W's and the one H, who, what, when, where, why, and how. And in competitions, we try to cover all of those, and I get truncated all the time because of what you just said, Greg. Uh, is there any way around that? I mean, is there any way to get clubs to, or the visual pursuits to, to allow us to have more characters? Because in journalism, if we're if we're gonna get, cover all those bases, we need to have we we need to have more than two two thousand characters. Okay, I don't know what it currently is, but you don't want to do that. The judge will downgrade you. You you need to have the photograph talk. You just want to provide mm -hmm. the minimum context you have. I, I've been I've been tagged because I didn't though. It, I mean, it depends on the judge. I know, but it, yeah. I've been tagged because I didn't cover all of those bases. Okay, I have not seen that happen for journalism, and it certainly doesn't apply to other places. Mm -hmm. Next. And this, again, you need to write. Uh, Santa Fe Photographic Workshop renamed itself a year or two ago to Santa Fe Workshops because they're including now a lot of uh, writing classes. You seem to feel the same thing. Next. So what? are you trying to do in photography? What are you trying to prove? What's your goals? If you don't have goals, how can you determine success? Where do you want to go in your photography? Next page. She wants to be someplace other than where she's working. Next page. So do you want to win more contests? whether it's in for C or in or whatever. Uh, do you want to win, win awards from various places? And what places actually would count for you? Do you want to be... <laughs> published in a major magazine? I have a friend, some of you may have photographed her, um, who's been on tin covers and magazines like Vogue as a model. But she is a photographer in other cases. What do you want to get praise from? Do you want to be in photo shows? Do you want to be published in the local newspaper? Do you want to go pro? One of my friends has just shut down everything he's doing to go pro. He's been doing semi-pro work. I'm sorry, he's been doing part-time pro work for about three years, but it's going full-time. Do you want to make uh, money or living from photography? I'm sure you've all heard the thing that's easy to make a million dollars in photography. You start with $2 million. <laughs> you want to make pictures that are more artistic. And for this, you need to define not only the art style, but also what do you mean by art photography? Uh, there's one person I know who claims that there are only five art photographers, true art photographers in the US. I think his pictures are a bit boring, so I'm not going to mention his name. But I have noticed if you do a little bit of research, 
that there are a lot of different kinds of art photographers in uh, operating in the US. They're different than sports photographers. And if, even if you think of sports photography, a football photographer may not be successful as a baseball photographer or may not be successful as an Olympic swimming photographer. There's a lot of uh, different kinds of photography in every field. So if you wanna be an art photographer, you need to find what you're actually trying to become. If you wanna equal the quality and style of some uh, other photographers without exactly copying them. So you wanna redo the Mona Lisa, but you don't wanna copy the Mona Lisa. You just wanna give people a bit of the feel of the Mona Lisa. My wife's in the room and she's taking my call for the evening. So hopefully I won't be coughing and interrupting this talk. Um, the person I try and copy to get the feel of is Maxfield Parrish. I'm sorry I didn't put a picture of uh, any of the style that I've made, but I've made some I'm very happy with. Next page. Who am I emulating here? Sorry, I'm charging this. I'm sorry. I'm charging this. Uh, laptop and um, my wife ran into the, um, who am I emulating here? Okay. <laughs> what can you actually do to improve your photography? Oops. Okay. I'm sorry, we did that big. Okay, so this I'm trying to do Ansel Adams. Um, this is from Tunnel View, and I really like the rock here, but I wanted to make the sky dark. So how do you make the sky dark? Colorizer. You, what? Colorizer. You can, but I didn't do that. Select the sky. What? Select the sky and then darken it? You can, but I did something much simpler than that. Change your f-stop. Uh, that wasn't needed in this case. I've got pure white here, so I've got pretty bright stuff. What did Ansel Adams do when he wanted a dark sky other than changing film? Mm. Dark red filter or infrared. And in post and Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever, you can simply apply a red filter. Mm. Next. So um, what do you, can, can you actually do to improve your photography. In part, it's going to depend on how much time you have. As a joke, I'm saying don't read time management books and don't even think about getting an MBA. Uh, both of them have good ideas. Even if you don't like MBAs because of problems you've had, some of their ideas are useful. But look at what your, what your own styles and field of interest are and how you could better develop these styles and understand them. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Martin Pierre do a 365 project. Read a lot on photography. Try out, experiment with ideas you may find interesting. Look at lots of photos every day and note what you like and don't like. There are lots of places to look at photos. I look at ViewBug and I look in Facebook. Um, recommend, if you can, get training to be a photographic judge. Uh, in for fee and similar run classes every few years. I found it very valuable in becoming better at photography. Um, take workshops from experts in the field you're interested in, whose work you admire, but also research carefully ahead of time what kind of workshop it is. I've been a few times where I've been very disappointed in the workshop because I didn't read the description well enough. I got excited by where we were going, destination, without reading what the instructor or the person presenting was actually planning to. I'll say that because not all of these people actually instruct very well. Um, but they might be able to get you into places 
that other people can't get you into. Well, getting out in the field with this guy was not that good. And it's actually his classes were not in what I was interested in. He had exquisite access to Hopi and Navajo and well, the Pueblos weren't cooperating that year, but into Hopi lands and then into Navajo land, lands. And I couldn't have otherwise done it without him. Next page. Feedback is key for improvement. If you don't get feedback, you don't know what's good and bad. There are two things that you can do in terms of feedback. One is, are you trying to make a picture that you like better, that is something that you are more happy with, that you are more pleased with? Or are you trying to make a picture that is successful and that other people like? And who are the other people? Are they, are they the average people that you run across? Are they the people in your camera club or some other group of friends? For example, I run a small uh, group called Conceptual Photography. And a lot of the work we do, you guys might find really boring. Hey, yes, sir. Kids are all right. Say again? Huh? I'm sorry, I thought I heard a question. Okay. Um, who are your competitors in the field that you want to get feedback in? What can you learn from them? Look at their pictures, see what they did well, see what they did poorly. What are good times for you to get feedback? That partly depends on your own personal mind and body. It partly depends on how busy it is. I'd recommend not asking people on the seventh game of the World Series what they like best about your photos. What kind of feedback are you after? Are you trying to get feedback in, oh, this is really stupid thing you did? Or I think I would like a few more pixels on the left side, or this is a wonderful picture. Can I buy a copy? What kinds of feedback do you want to avoid? Um, understand the UDA feedback load. We'll get back into that. And it's, I mentioned some places where you can get uh, a clue on finding people that can give you uh, options, opinions on your work. But, um, Think through your own list. And I'd like to see your list of, because that's something I could prove here, of where do you find people that you get feedback from? Next, please. Udalu. This is critically important in a lot of fields. Um, those of you who know the history, understand what I'm talking about. It's invented by John Boyd, who was the greatest fire, fighter pilot of all times, who never shot down an enemy airplane. Um, he was great. He inc incredibly good uh, pilot. Um, he had a bet, a $40 Boyd. He'd allow anyone to get behind him in a jet plane. He was a F-86 pilot to start with. And he would give the other pilot 40 seconds if he could get on the other pilot's tail inside a minute. He seldom lost. Um, a lot of interesting stories about them. Uh, the Wikipedia UDA article is pretty good, uh, but there's several books on them that are worth reading. So a photographic mapping of UDA would be, observe, what is around you? Orient, where is the sun or other lights? Are there any local danger, trains, cliffs, edges, unsafe streets? Uh, Twin Peaks right now seems to be a bit dangerous, and so on. Decide. What is your picture to be? How are you going to process it? Act, take the picture, take backups. For me, that means I make it a little bit wider because I have a tendency to get in too tight to a picture. Frequently, so I'll back off. Um, do HDR versions. You probably won't be there again with the same conditions. So get the HDR now and see what you can do. Change the angle of what you're photographing. Change the height from as high over your head as you can hand, hold it, down to as low to the ground as you can go. A uh, flipping mirror on the back is really helpful for this. You could extend this photographic mapping a lot, but it'd take more pages to do it. 
Any questions on Uda? A is act. Oh. X, please. What are your top three inspirations in your artwork work? Um, you'll notice from the first one that I've been influenced by the Navajos. You'll notice from the second one that I get up early and go to bed late frequently. And the third one may give you feel that I'm deeply interested in astronomy and physics. But what are yours? This could influence what kind of artwork you do. It could give you inspiration. Next. This was taken, it's a five minute exposure, made with a 400 millimeter lens on it tracking mount, barn door tracker. You may not, there are three galaxies here, as you may well know. What you may not realize is that if you dig in tightly, um, I started as a question, could I see parts of the Andromeda galaxy? Um, and here's a star cloud in the Andromeda galaxy. But I wanted to get deeper. I was wondering, could I see, <laughs> <coughs> different globular clusters of Andromeda. I looked up an online uh, map of globular clusters, high resolution in Andromeda, one of those ones where the stars are black and the sky is white. And dug down a couple hours work, ended up with 30 globular clusters that I identified all with a little 400 millimeter lens. I think if I went through the whole of Andromeda, I could probably identify about a hundred different globular clusters, which to me is just absolutely amazing. Globular clusters used to be almost impossible to photograph in another galaxy. And here I've got on the order of a hundred possible and 30 confirmed um, with just uh, medium quality amateur gear. To me, that just blows my mind. Next. So how could you improve your photography? I'll point out first that the title is pretty bad. I could wordsmith it quite a bit. But as I mentioned, judge, N4C, or try Viewbug. They always need judges. They don't pay, but the N4C judges aren't paid very much either. Where else might you get practice judging? Analyze what you like and don't like from pictures of a year or more ago. If the pictures are more recent, they're probably too fresh in your memory. Go back and look. Go look at groups of pictures. As I mentioned, I tried publishing sets of seven. And I used to be very excited about each week, but a year later, I may say, uh, these aren't that good. And then the question is, why are they not that good? What can I do to improve them? <laughs> Take workshops in person. Take classes or online workshops. Help each other in your club. <laughs> Find clubs who group in your fields of interest. There are a lot of different fields out there. Next, please. There are various uh, our talks, reviews of photographers. John Carnicello, last two years, had a wonderful series of conversations. He covered, oh, probably half of the best known uh, photographers in the world. Um, and he'd have a two hour discussion with them, um, showing off some of the work talking about. And then he'd often have an hour of just the people in the audience talking. All of his work is on YouTube. 
So you can go look up there. Stephen Johnson has uh, most weeks a uh, discussion group. Uh, you need to petition to get into that. Joe Decker has the fourth Sunday of the month review. He's got some wonderful pictures um, and I recommend it. That's free. 1 to 4 p.m. on the last Sunday of the month. Um, Joe Decker has been artist in residence in a number of uh, US uh, national parks and in a Norwegian national park in Spitsbergen, wow. as well as Tristan Antarctica. Great work. <coughs> Get on the mailing list for a lot of pro photographers. Um, some of you like a lot, others not so much, but you can learn from all of them. Various other stuff. And I mentioned the conceptual photography uh, group. Next. Look at pictures. Uh, this is from the, st the, the stuff in parentheses. Says the date uh, that I published it in Photographic Arts 365. So I talked about looking at the pictures of others, recropping the picture of others to see if you can improve the picture, uh, reprocessing the pictures of others to see if you can improve it. Someone at one point thought that the pictures they posted were great. Can you make it better? Now, if you're in a US museum, you probably won't see it. If you're a European museum, you see a lot of art students uh, painting and copies of masterworks. <laughs> <laughs> Photography yeah. works at a different speed than um, painting, so you can try more different things. <laughs> Excuse me for the cough. Next. You can enter shows. The goal is not to sell the picture. The goal is not to have the best of the show. <laughs> the goal is to defeat your fear of exposure. I mentioned doing 365 and doing a 52 by seven. Volunteer to help local agencies. I helped the Half Moon Bay Fire Department in search training. And the Harbor Masters also used my pictures of rescue drills I do with the US Coast Guard. Of course, you have to publish the pictures uh, in the case of the Harbor Master because they didn't know me. In the case of the fire department, they knew me because I had gone through search training and then I asked if I could take pictures. Next. <laughs> Write. Write for your local photography newsletter. Maybe do a weekly photography newsletter. Do a daily essay. That's what I've been doing. Same time to get more practice writing in part and editing, which is a bit different. Um, a couple of years ago, I put together. <coughs> Forty-eight weeks, uh, letter a week to my extended family. Well, actually, all the people that came from my father's mother, my grandmother. Um, using my grandmother's biography and autobiography, the autobiography of others, I'd include about a dozen pictures so I could find them. And I ended up with about a ten-page newsletter every week for forty-eight weeks. That was good practice in writing and in editing the work of other people. Next. I have not mentioned gas, gear acquisition syndrome. The buying of new gear because you can, because it's cool, because it's neat. Mary, um, go ahead, Mary. Not understand, Mary, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding your question. Do you wanna say it out loud? It's not a question. I was just heeding the advice of 
overcoming the fear of exposure. So I sent a link of some images that I've taken. Oh, okay, thank you. Good for you. What I did not mention, Tom Hogan is one of the nature photographers that I most respect. Maybe he's the one that I most respect. And in post-processing digital, and I do say digital because Kim Weston likes, still likes to do analog. Um, I think Tom Hogan's amazing. My advice is never change. Buy what you need first and foremost, buy what you want secondarily. A new camera lens may be lots of fun, but it won't make you a better photographer most of the time. There's specialized fields where you need specialized gear. Um, I'd suggest using your money for in-person workshops or similar. Um, I'm taking a workshop on the 31st to the 2nd of um, May, June, uh, three nights with Eddie Soloway, who's a wonderful lyrical uh, photographer of nature. He found some absolutely lovely images. And that workshop's fairly cheap. You can uh, sign up for it through uh, the uh, Santa Fe workshops. Um, also learn how to do minor maintenance on camera. Cleaning sensors isn't that hard. Uh, taking your tripod legs apart may be harder, harder than cleaning your sensor. But if you go to the beach, you do want to get the sand out of your tripod. Uh, filters are easy to clean. Some filters you can make in a photographic art site. Major number of filters that you make. <laughs> <coughs> Flashes sometimes need repair, and sometimes you can uh, make modifiers for flashes that would uh, be useful. Next, improving your workflow. Next, let's take two examples. Adam, so Adams, um, he's slow, deliberate most of the time. Some days he's kind of fast. Craig Gorman is a wonderful uh, portrait photographer. He gave a talk for John Cornicello, and he mentioned that in a uh, shoot one morning, typical, he did it of the son of the person who runs Santa Fe workshops. He took 4,000 pictures of the 17-year-old kid. And he strongly interacted with his subject talking the whole, to him the whole time. What are the differences? Ansel Adams had a heavy, slow view camera most of the time. Uh, one time when he used 35 millimeter, it almost caused a divorce. Anybody know that story? Ansel Adams was out in New Mexico uh, going um, camping by horseback with a very famous female painter. Anyone guess who it is? Portia. What? Georgia O'Keefe. Georgia O'Keefe. And a cowboy who was the person who helped them out doing things. Ansel Adams took a 35 millimeter photograph of Georgia O'Keefe and the cowboy laughing. And Ansel then gave a copy to the cowboy. Cowboy's wife saw it and thought it was proof that her husband had been fooling around with George O'Keefe. <laughs> Ripped up the photograph and threatened divorce. The daughter, a number of years later, sent a, a letter to Ansel Adams saying what happened and he printed another copy for her. Try both approaches, they both work, but also think back to the parable of the ceramics class, which was a real experiment, but also acts as a parable. Next, basics, you're gonna download, you're gonna select by scene by scene uh, and place the pictures in well-named photos, folders. That's hard to use if you're using uh, Apple photos. Things get confused there. Do your initial down select, okay. Select them for bad, okay, and exceptional. I use Photo Mechanic because it's the fastest one out there. It is expensive. 
uh, fast draw viewer is cheap. It does a good job. If you have Lightroom, you also have Bridge, which can do the job. <laughs> <coughs> and Bridge has a wonderful whirling feature where it just spins the photos round and round. It's lots of fun. At this point, do your first backup. Then down select to see which images to edit. Do your initial global edits. Um, Tom Hogan's recommending you just use one slider. Um, this will be in my newsletter in a week or two. Um, then do the final edits, which are local, using mass sliders. So in the example he did of an underexposed giraffe, he used the shadows section to brighten up the shadows, which were really dark. Then all the other corrections he made were using uh, the masking elements that are in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop. No selection, then I back it up again. Every week or so, I send a backup disk to the bank to go in a safety deposit box. The bank is not in the same fire district I'm in. It's not in the same flood district. It's uh, probably not going to be affected by earthquakes the same as my house. When you're doing this work, does speed matter? Does accuracy matter? Do variations in style type, such as portrait, landscape, matter? How about post-processing a portrait as landscape? I did that to a few older folks who had been out in the sun most of their lives. Three of them, two or three of them were cowboys at a ranch in Wyoming. One was Kim Weston, who's been outside a lot. So I was emphasizing the fact that they'd been in the sun with deep crevices and other things. One of the people started screaming at me in horror. Kim thought it was kind of fun. Back up, please. Back up, back up twice. One, okay, forward one. Um, does the accuracy of what you're doing matter? Maybe yes, maybe no. Okay, we did that. Try doing a landscape in the sense of a portrait and you may get something that approaches um, the work of Maxfield Parrish. That's part of what he does. He also oversaturates and does some other things. I don't, because of something someone, a comment made to, someone made to me a long time ago about my oversaturating my work, I don't use a saturation or vibrant slider. I try and do things without using them. Next. Greg, Greg how do you feel about uh, uh, off-site storage? Uh, I, I, and, and uh, you're talking about cloud storage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, about half the vendors I've seen have disappeared on a week or less notice. If you have a terabyte on a vendor and they give you one week to download because they're shutting up shop, how much of that terabyte are you going to be able to get? Yeah, and, and I've heard like Carbonite, for instance, is one of the best. I mean, if you download all of your stuff, the good thing about an external hard drive is you get exact mirror of what you put in. With, with off-site storage, if you go to retrieve your data, are you going to get it in the same order? Is, or is it going to be care. all jumbled? I don't care because I don't care about the order. I care about having carefully labeled folder names. So I have one folder that has 2021. Mm -hmm. And inside it, I have all my flower pictures in one folder. Uh, one folder has uh, photo shots I've done of different people and there are different folders named. And in it, inside each folder, it may have a picture of them dancing, a picture of them holding, sorry, a group of photos of them dancing, a group of photos of uh, them holding flowers and so on. So it's the names of the folders which are critical to me, not the organization. I'm not going to find things by organization down at the bit level. I want to go in and search for ballet shoes. <laughs> Which I've gotten some great pictures of. Well, I, I, do, I do the same thing. I have folders, but within those folders, I have uh, my pictures numerically in order. I mean, th that's going to get all messed up, I think, right? I don't care. Hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying, I think. Since I use Photo Mechanic and 
bridge and fast for all would also work fast for all is 20 bucks <coughs> last i looked um i could sort with a photo mechanic i can sort through um 2,000 pictures, which is typical for pictures I get in a four hour shoot. I can download the pictures from the SD card, sort them into 20 or 30 different folders and get the backup started inside an hour. Hmm. That's, these tools allow you to really quickly go through and find the pictures you want. I also use color coding instead of stars because I think it's easier to tell the difference between red and blue than between three stars and four stars. Not all of those allow for color coding. Um, so boring but necessary backup, offsite storage, I don't like, um, as I said, the cloud at all. Um, have a plan to recover after disk failure. Are you gonna restore the whole disk all once or you can do partial backup? If you're taking stuff into the bank every week, you're probably doing a partial backup. Have you figured out a plan for when you go on a trip, how you're going to integrate everything you did on the trip back into the uh, disk that you have at home? Um, you want to tag your pictures so you can still find it quickly. For example, what were my kids doing in the year 2006? I can find that in under a minute. What are you going to do if your software stops working? This is a problem I had when Apple stopped supporting Aperture, which I really liked as a raw processor. It took me months, about six months, to convert all my uh, Aperture photos into my idea of having named folders and labeling those folders and putting them out. But in the process, I said, I'm not going to be stuck with having something like my raw viewer and cataloger and raw processor all in one package. If that breaks, I'm using three different pieces of software and I've identified for myself at least three different substitute uh, programs. In case the program I want to use most disappears, I've got backups. Next. And here's a person working hard um, on a ship at sea. You can tell by the tip that the ship is rocking and he's breaking up the coal ash. Um, this is an homage to Howard P's books about a guy who runs away to sea in the 20s and 30s. But it was also an assignment at Santa Fe workshops to do um, put a heavy purple filter on the camera lens and then change the color temperature of the strobe light so that the pictures of the guy came out normal, but everything else came out looking different. Mm -hmm. Next. Study quotations. Ansel Adams quote, if you think of a book, a book's gonna have a bunch of ideas and the author's gonna take the whole book to expound, uh, expound on the ideas. If you take a poem, you can do a poem that covers all of the key concepts of a book. But a good quotation covers everything that's important in a poem in one pithy statement. Ansel Adams is a great place to start because he has lots of great quotations. There are lots of other people with good quotations in photography. And I post one a week in my newsletter. So one of his, there are no good rules for photographs. There are only good photographs. Get rid of the rule of thirds. It is the camera, it is the photographer, not the camera that is the instrument. That goes back to gas. You don't really need, with exceptions, uh, a really high specialized expensive stuff. Exceptions are close up macro photography, astrophotography and similar needs of stuff. Earning, my wife says, yes. To the complaint, there are no people in the photographs. I respond, there are always two people, the photographer and the viewer. Next. 
What are your goals? If you don't have a goal, you're sure not to fail. So if you want to avoid failure, don't set any goals. You want to fail a bit. If you never fail, you're not trying hard enough. Your goals are too modest. The question is, how often should you fail? If you fail too much, you're too ambitious. I'm gonna make better photographs than Ansel Adams. Well, okay, I can get my wife to believe that. Can I, <laughs> can I get the average person in the street? Maybe. Can I get a camera club to believe it? You're out of your mind. Set some goals. Just try and achieve them. If it's too easy to achieve, set harder goals. Next. text. Initial goals I'm mentioning, take photos every day, process pictures normally, uh, and creative daily. Creative photography is a bit different. Look critically at pictures of others every day. Publish, show your pictures frequently, and learn about other forms of 3D art. I've been looking at a lot of painters, I enjoy the fact that they have complete freedom over composition, uh, but they take longer to do the work than we do. Uh, reread Art and Fear. The most important thing is to take pictures every day, according to Joe. Next page. Advance, judge photo contests, communicate on photography, give talks, write essays, teach. Make a photo book, study painting and others. Reread Art and Fear. Next. Um, what are some sets of photography and competition categories? Next. So this is roughly what Infocy and PSA categories are. I've, I've not strictly defined it. Um, not all clubs use it. I just asked a judge for the Sierra Camera Club and they have no rules. Anything goes. They just want to find what is the best picture and the second best. Um, photojournalism is a, has a couple of problems. One is it often is aimed for cute pictures rather than true blood, guts, crime, fire, accident pictures, which I consider journalism. I remember turning in a picture of a collision and the victim was pointing to the head of the fire department um, who hit her. I thought it was an okay picture. Um, I was stuck in traffic waiting for the light. At my phone. A friend of mine uh, woke up one morning, went out the front door and found the San Francisco SWAT team with guns ready, uh, rushing the house next door to her. Turned out the neighbor next door was one of the criminal people in uh, Hell's Angels. And they were out to get him. I thought her picture was far better than mine and deserved to win. The picture that won, and her picture was technically and artistically good. The picture that won was a picture of a two-year-old kid squatting down feeding ducks at a lake. Um, I disagreed with the judge. Next. We could look at pictures in an alternate way, uh, landscapes and portraits. If you go as an average person in the street, what kinds of photos are there? What categories? They'd probably say landscapes and portraits. They might also say street, architecture, fashion, sports, festivals, events. But this is a very different list than in for CPSA. Next. You could do something science oriented, macro, astrophotography, lightning, uh, northern lights or southern lights, time lapses, something a little bit different. Yes, this can be mapped into the pictorial catalog category in N4C because anything goes in pictorial. But next, conceptual, you could do science fiction, traditional, fantasy, urban, fantasy. Fantasy and Alice in Wonderland style. You can do cosplay, 
uh, photography. You could do, by the way, I believe Fanime is on this coming weekend. Really? You can do creative photography in a whole bunch of different ways. Next. You can copy the style of old masters. I've done that cage. You can do pictorialism. Do uh, cubism. F F64. Just play with these. Try them out. See what interests you. See what doesn't. Next. You can do people and family engagement. Wedding. I don't like actually doing weddings. I like doing trash the dress, you know, where you have fun after the wedding and the bride and bridegroom are more relaxed. I've, uh, that said, the best pictures I've ever taken have been at weddings where uh, the brother or the father or someone hated the idea that the marriage was happening and the anguish on their faces has been amazing. But with no model release, um, if I had a model release, I wouldn't do it. It's too much deep into their souls. Uh, baby pictures can be fun. Uh, family portraits, pets. Uh, you can combine these with fantasy and cosplay. Next. You can try doing advertising photography. Uh, if it's liquid and alcohols and food, you might also consider that macro. Next. Uh, you can do sports and note that different kinds of sports are not the same. Uh, if you're gonna photograph juggling well, uh, the skills you see in football or baseball probably won't work too well. I photograph juggling, I'm a juggler. Next. Uh, here's a dawn picture with a um, light pillar above the rising sun and a few other things. I just thought I'd end it with this picture. Okay, any questions? Greg, what's Urban fantasy. Fair question. Classical fantasy goes back, um, think of uh, Tolkien, oh. Lord of the Rings, something like that. Uh, 18th century fantasy, Alice in Wonderland, and similar. Urban fantasy is the most popular kind today. And it is uh, people like Patricia Briggs, who talks about werewolves uh, living in the Tri-Cities of Eastern Washington State and fighting off elves. Um, and the police know, some of the police know the wolves and her friends, the werewolves and her friends with them. So urban fantasy is typically laid in a city today or near to today. Classical fantasy is more laid in the woods with castles and elves are good and so on. In the case of Patricia Briggs, the elves are bad, the werewolves are good. Thank you. Next question. Greg, what is cosplay? I've never heard that term. Cosplay is when people get dressed up as a character, typically dressed up as a Japanese uh, magna or uh, anime character. Uh, like, like, like costume play, so COS costume. It is cosplay, but it's typically um, um, of Japanese characters, but not always. I've seen Superman there and Batman and others. Um, I was a chief photographer for Fanime for three years. And it was a lot of fun. It was also fun uh, taking pictures of uh, certain religious people who are trying to break up the scene. I was taking pictures. So if they started hitting people, we'd have photographic as a, evidence. Comic-Con is a good place to do things like that. Yeah. It's important to ask, if at all possible, ask people if you could take their picture. A place like Fanime, they're very generally, very happy to have you take the pictures. Just give the pictures back to them. There is, um, <coughs> at the same time, an adult cosplay going on. The Fanime people are generally young and they have problems with old men taking pictures of the young people. But what's the name of the uh, other one that you went to? Steampunk. 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 A uh, festival going on at the same time. And that's uh, mostly 18th century. People get dressed up in 18th century. They wear pocket watches that make you think of old time railroads. Uh, they have lanterns that can be turned into a death beam and so on, things like that. They that's have a awesome. lot of gears. 
Yeah, they're fun. Gears. They have fun. My wife likes to dress up like that. I think there's a big festival with that in Texas or someplace, um, but it's like towards the end of summer. Um, I went to the Civil War reenactment uh, up in Northern California. It's one of the biggest ones outside of the East Coast, yeah. and I got a lot of really fun pictures yeah. from that. Monterey has had and may still be having one to celebrate uh, the Argentinian pirate that seized California about 110 years ago. And he first landed and took Monterey, and then he went down and took Santa Barbara. And they have a festival with them attacking and being beaten up. There's also a, sacra a very active Sacramento steampunk um, group that puts on a steampunk festival every year. And I there may be one in San Francisco too, but I'm not too sure about that. There's also science fiction conventions that have uh, some dress up things, but at the cosplay and steampunk things, almost everything relates to the costuming. If they have movies, okay. um, if they, uh, the movies will be on that. If they have panels and discussing, it'll be on how you do things. If you want to get back even further, a thousand years or so, there's a Society for Creative Anachronisms, uh, which does stuff back in the good old days of uh, King Arthur and so on. Next. Next page, please. Oh. You can try and do, well, we did that page. I guess no. I've been in there twice, sorry. Uh, we did that, we did those. We're yeah, good. we're at the end, yeah. Okay, more questions. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah, Greg, uh, I, I, when I first started traveling years ago, I, I would go back to my hotel room at the end of the day and I would lay on my bed and I would delete all the, the known, I mean, the blurry ones and the ones I didn't like from my SD card to free up space. I've since heard that that's bad to do and you can actually corrupt your card. Have you heard anything like that? Yep, you can corrupt your card. Okay. Um, the it's other like thing taking books off of a shelf and then when you go to take a picture, it's got to find room to stick it in because you have all these little holes in the shelves, but the piles might be oh. bigger than you can fit into the spaces. Oh, wow, yeah. okay, okay. Um, the, there's another problem with that. You know, if the SD card's too small, that's one thing. But deleting a picture today, you may find out later that that's the picture you really wanted a year or two from now. I don't delete. I can. It's not going to save me any time at all in finding the images. And it is going to slow me down to go and find the image that I want to get rid of. If you're using good tools like Bridge, Fast, Raw View, or Photo Mechanic, you can go through an enormous number of raw images very, very fast. And you need to evaluate. Is it worth your time to delete the bad pictures given that you may or may not need them? You can make them disappear after you've color coded or star coded the images by simply saying, I don't want to see any picture that doesn't have a star or a color. Hmm. The whole name of the game is this is a boring thing to do. Let's do it quickly. SD cards also have a limited write capability. They will eventually die. And the difference between deleting and formatting, formatting does not delete your images. It's like just deleting the table of contents and yep. recreating it. Yep. Um, the other thing is, is that um, SD card, if you look at what is the cost versus size of SD cards and speed, they keep getting better and better. So, you know, I started with 16, a gigabyte and then went to 64 gigabyte when I could afford it. Now, for the past few years, I've been using 256 gigabyte cards. Mm -hmm. And um, that will last several different sessions. I pull separate them out by date, time date. Um, in fact, you can do all of your sorting if you're careful by uh, time date without ever looking at the images, uh, you know, into the rough sort for the folders. Um, but you, you don't need to use the same. If you have a 16 gigabyte card right now, my question for you is why? If you have a 64 gigabyte card, um, I won't say the question is why, but you'll get better performance mm -hmm. with a faster card and it is bigger. And you may or may not be reaching the limit of performance of your 64, depending on how you shoot, I don't know. But going to 256, 
that's you could get rid of all your 64s or let people in the family who don't take that many pictures use them. I often shoot more than 64 gig in one day when I'm out doing a serious shoot. Next question, any? Okay, you can get a hold of me through Steve or through Mike. Um, I'm sorry, my voice is off. I've got recently developed cancer and I'm one of the things that affects me is my voice, the other is coughing and the other is, and you got lucky, severe pain. Uh, I'm really happy I didn't let it happen during this talk. But thank you very much. Um, thank you, Greg. You. Yeah. See all the pictures you guys doing. Let me know if you're doing a 365 and where. Um, and do read Art and Fear. It's only, it's under $7 as an ebook from Amazon. Okay, Greg, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now.